Hey guys, All In Crypto here and welcome back ladies and gentlemen for another All In Crypto podcast. I am All In Crypto and today we've got a special guest coming on the show. We've got Stephen Ward, the CEO of VY Finance, here today to talk to us about his product uh, and ultimately you know what VYFI is doing from a, from an outsider looking in, and I'm sure Stephen's going to give us a lot more information on this. Is really trying to innovate uh, and create a suite of products for DeFi um, on top of the Cardano ecosystem. So, welcome on board, Stephen. It's great to have you with me. Yeah, thanks so much for having me, mate. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, it's it's absolutely a pleasure to have you on. Um, I like to start off with all my guests with a little bit about themselves, uh, maybe an introduction, mm-hmm. how you kind of found crypto, and and, and then how perhaps you. Um, are where you are today with VY Finance? Yeah, look, it's a question I find myself asking quite occasionally as well, quite often as well, um, because life takes some twists and turns. So I was a physics major at university. Uh, From there, I went into working at a hedge fund, um, focusing on bonds. And we were mostly looking at interest rate swaps. Um, I'll do the abridged version because let's get get into the product. So from the bonds, I then went to work into – in advisory, um, where I was basically assisting with income stream products and assisting with setting up income stream products for people that were retiring. Um, And then from there, I discovered DeFi, right? And what was really interesting for me, particularly playing with liquidity pools, was that the mathematics and the underpinning mechanics of liquidity pools and interest rate swaps is very similar. So I found myself very naturally drawn to trading these instruments. Um, In 2019, I started collecting a small fund from friends and families to essentially start trading in DeFi. And from there, I performed very well in DeFi summer. Um, I think if we remember 2020 into 2021, uh, the DeFi just absolutely exploded. Um, And whilst using a lot of this DeFi, I noticed a lot of underpinning problems that I saw within these systems, the way that they were organized, the way that their token was designed you know, quite a few different structural issues, I guess you'd say. So I decided to design my own system to try and fix these structural issues as well as I could. Wow, yeah, interesting. Yeah, I certainly remember uh, DeFi Summer. There was lots of sort of airdrops. I remember the Uniswap airdrop, which at the time seemed like a bit of a gimmick, and then all of a sudden that did very well for everyone. Certainly people had multiple MetaMasks. Um, interesting that you've got a financial background. One thing I love about crypto is you've got such an eclectic group of people. You know, my background is actually in dentistry, believe it or not. Um, but there's far <laughs> weirder backgrounds out there in the crypto space than mine. And it's a great sort of coming together of a whole group of people all working towards, a, I'd say not the same goal, but a similar goal. Um, and was there anything particular in sort of DeFi summer that you really enjoyed playing around with? You know, Fantastic news to hear that it was a success for you with with, with the funds that you were um, sort of uh, playing with. I mean, DeFi it, has a lot of risks. I, yeah, DeFi has a lot of risks. Anything that I particularly enjoyed playing around with. I guess I'm a um, I'm a trader by heart, right? That's where I started my career was in trading. And what really makes the capacity to earn an income in trading is inefficiency within markets. Um. DeFi summer was an incredibly inefficient period in the market. So are bears, so are bulls. The markets tend to be, particularly crypto markets, tend to be inefficient most of the time. Um, that's why price discovery is always happening, right? Like there, there isn't really much of a fundamental price in a lot of tokens. You know, that's just an aside. So I found myself very inclined to take advantage of those inefficiencies um, through my understanding of impermanence risk and the mathematics that were underpinning impermanence risk. And by finding those pairs where their APY was essentially outstripping the perceived impermanence risk or the real impermanence risk, you would be able to find yourself a real advantage because essentially the pair would usually get brought up until the APY was about in line with what the actual impermanence risk was within the market. <laughs> and you could ride that wave up Um as that APY was, you know, misappropriated, wasn't quite at market value, and you ride that wave up, and then you would take out the liquidity, and you would have made the difference as a spread, right? Which is essentially spread trading, which is what my background was. Um, so from there, uh, I just basically did that all day, every day. <laughs> wow! <laughs> Absolutely honed it. <laughs> yeah, that sounds stressful and exciting at the same time. And, and would you say that VYFI yeah. 
has been born out of an inefficiency in the market. It's interesting because you talk about price discovery there. You spoke about a number of things. Um, inefficiency does provide amazing opportunities. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, me and you probably know this very well. Would you say that VWiFi has been born out of an inefficiency perhaps in, in, in the DeFi space? Absolutely. So probably on two levels, right? Cardano as an ecosystem is lacking a degree of DeFi that exists within an ecosystem. So we, it exists within a structure. At the moment, there's a few things, few people doing DeFi, but they exist as very disparate projects. And they're not really interacting and interoperating with each other to a very high degree. Sorry. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, so we want to just essentially build a suite of products that are all connected to each other in a DeFi manner. So if I do something somewhere on the ecosystem, it's impacting something somewhere else. You know, it's all coming together. And that's through our bar, which we'll get into. It's all coming together to create a suite that's a sustainable DeFi ecosystem. Um, and one of the main ways that we achieve this is by essentially changing the way that we manage our tokens emissions. And I'll start from there. Um, very often we, when we're looking at tokens in the DEX space in particular, they've got a very highly inflationary nature. So the way that we've designed our token is to have an emissions that's built for many, many years. In fact, 21 years plus, we never actually reach the full emissions, but 21 years is the principal period of 85% of the emissions, right? So that long time frame means that there's a lot of opportunity to build value for people that are going to be liquidity mining and want to engage with that ecosystem for a long period of time, right? Now, we've got the distributive mechanism, our bar, and our bar is designed to essentially take a percentage of all the volume that takes place in our decks and of all the fees that are garnered, and we use those fees to repurchase VIFI from the market. And then we distribute that VIFI to everyone that staked their VIFI at the bar. Now, this is similar to the sushi bar in construction in that we are redistributing a portion of all the fees that are generated and we're using that to provide support for the providers of liquidity on our platform, like a real price support born from a real fee. But as we're building out more of our products, every single one of our product lines are going to be there to support the bar in some way. So the lottery feeds through to our bar, our NFT loyal, our royalties feed through to our bar. We're going to release our auto harvester, which is our next product, which is a liquidity aggregator, which will be the first liquidity aggregator on Cardano. And a portion of all the farm, 10% of all the farm that's generated from the liquidity aggregator is going to be converted to BiFi and, you know, stake, uh, served, sorry, to our bar. So all of these systems that we're implementing are all being used to create a sustainable demand for the underlying token that's being used to provide reward to the liquidity providers on our market. In turn, providing a consistent stream of real liquidity coming into our farming token and allowing for farmers to engage for real long-term income through liquidity rewards. Interesting. That, there's a lot to unpack there, I think. Um, Let's maybe go back a bit and let's just start with uh, an overview of VY5. So if, if I'd never heard of VY5 and I came to you and I said, Stephen, what is VY5? What is VY Finance? What are you going to tell me? Okay. So VY5 is, in a few simple words, elevator pitch, a DeFi suite that allows users on the Cardano chain to manage their funds in a safer and more reliable manner. That would be the easiest way that I can describe it. Okay, and how, um, and, and how are we doing that? Yeah, so we'll look at it from the perspective of our DEX. And we've created a DEX that's very uniquely Cardano in implementation. So we've involved a lot of Cardano's unique technological capacities to create some unique systems within our DEX that you won't see on any other blockchain. So... An example of that is we have stakeless LP farming. So that means that you don't actually need to stake your LPs into a farm to be able to access the rewards that you have for actually holding liquidity. And just hold those LP tokens in your pocket. And, and does that get, do, do now, those rewards get distributed to you in the form of an airdrop or, or, or how does that work? They get, they, they're claimed through our site, just like you would stand, just like you would on normal claim from a farm. Okay. But one of the advantages, of course, is that because we're doing it as stakelessly, we're able to aggregate all the farms and you actually can't even 
harvest a farm one by one. You aggregate all of it and you only harvest all the farms, right? Wow. So you can hold you can hold 50 separate LP tokens in your wallet and you're automatically farming all 50 LP tokens from our site simultaneously. Yeah, and this is actually now, the advantage of Cardano uh, and the way that it's built because if you were to do that on Ethereum, for example, your gas fees would be, oh, I dread insane. to even think. Yeah, exactly. And not only that, but we've got dual rewards as well, which means multiple of our pools are offering two tokens, three tokens at once for farming. So you could have 15 tokens in rewards, all of them in dual farms, and you could be doing a single harvest that's costing you, I think it's three Cardano as a total fee, three Cardano, and you're going to be receiving 30 tokens back as your reward. Wow. Right? Um, and... Sorry, I should say 16 tokens back as your reward because the dual farms means one different and Wi-Fi. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but that number is scalable, right? So um, so that's one of the ways that our DEX is very unique and easier for a user to interact with. But now what's taken place here is that we've left the LP tokens in people's wallets. And these LP tokens are actually derivative tokens that contain the underlying contents of the LP. So rather than just being thought of as a token that gets locked away and put into a vault that you don't think about as soon as you've made it so you're able to access farm, and then the only time you touch it again is when you withdraw it from the vault, we've now, by leaving these tokens in people's wallets, given access to the LP token's value itself. So the the first way we've implemented this on our decks is with layer two liquidity farming. We're calling it L2LP, layer two liquidity pools. What this essentially is, it's a system where you provide your liquidity pool token and your Cardano, just like you would with a liquidity pool, and you supply that to liquidity. It's like Inception with liquidity pools, right? Yep. And by supplying that to liquidity, we've now created a brand new market on our swap where people can actually directly go and buy LP tokens or wow. sell LP tokens directly into the market. Inter right? Very interesting. I don't think that's done... Certainly anyway. on card. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think even, I mean, I, I use uh, pretty much most DeFi spaces, or at least I've checked them out. I can't really think where that's done anywhere, to be honest. No, no, that's not. That's something that only becomes available because we're able to leave the liquidity pool tokens unlocked and available to actually access that value, right? Now, the beauty of our system, and this is where it becomes incredibly user-friendly from a front-end side, You've never engaged with liquidity before, but you want to learn. You can come to our swap and you can just put in 100 Cardano and you can buy 100 Cardano's worth of the liquidity pool token for, let's say, Cardano Wi-Fi. As soon as that liquidity pool token hits your wallet from the swap, you're instantly farming. You don't have to do anything else, wow. right? Because it's stakeless LP for them. So that means we've taken the entire process of adding liquidity, approving a farm, depositing to the farm and harvesting has essentially just gone to do a swap, now you're fine. Yep, you've basically rolled it up into a derivative. Uh, it, 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 it's not a yep. derivative. Well, it kind of is a derivative it's sort of in, in in a financial term, but that's pretty cool. I mean, that's not just pretty cool. That's that that that's very cool. Certainly for new users to Cardano or new users to DEX is just full stop. Um, so just in layman's term, let, let's, let, me, let me maybe try and break that down. You can tell me if I'm wrong on any point here. So if you wanted, mm -hmm. in opposition with going to, to a normal DEX to... Um, farm liquidity. Not only can you do it in the normal way, but it's more than that because the LP token you don't actually have to stake, but then you can, in this layer two fashion, um, actually then provide pools for it. Again, you're instantly getting rewards, but then you're getting extra rewards for providing extra liquidity via this token that then people can buy and instantly get access to, right. to being farmers uh, as a result of. That right. is... Pretty genius, to be honest with you. And now let's think about it. Let's think about it from the provider's perspective, from the LP provider's perspective. <clears throat> Your liquidity pool token position is 50% Cardano, 50% BiFi, as an example. 50% token A, 50% token B. Doesn't really matter what they are. If I now create a layer two liquidity with this and I'm matching it with Cardano, the underlying token of the blockchain, so let's call that token A, I've got now my LP token, which is 50-50, and I've now added 50% value of token A. So now my total liquidity pools portfolio is 25% token B, 75% token A. What we've essentially done is we've created a hedge against our impermanent risk. 
Because as the value of the token reduces and you're losing value in the liquidity pool, the layer two liquidity pool is earning more liquidity pool tokens, reducing the net impermanent risk that your portfolio is experiencing by 50%. And that's with respect to the base currency token A, I should add. That's not with respect to dollars, dollars in this case. Yeah. Um, it, 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 permanent loss is a, it, is a real risk with DEX. It's something I've suffered from in the past. I think it's something that puts many people off. It's quite scary, isn't it, really, if you, if you don't know how to manage mm -hmm. it and, and you're not very savvy with this sort of stuff. I think the interesting thing could be, I mean, have you guys got any stable coins on your DEX as of yet? We do. We've got the Cardano stable coins. JED isn't super stable. IUSD is more stable than JED. Yep. Um, and we're actually... Hopefully next, so in the next sort of, what, week and a half, we're going to be setting up our first stable coin layer two liquidity pools Wow, with IUSD. Because that's when things so get, that's I think, really interesting. Time. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Because then what you can do, you can do compound positions where you do something like ADA, VIFI, and then 50% IUSD. So now you've got yourself essentially, and you'd have to run the numbers on this. I don't know exactly what it is because in a portfolio, you're balancing it against other positions. But you're essentially creating yourself equivalent long and shorts in other markets. I've got 50% IUSD. Now I've got ADA VIFI. As VIFI goes up, I'm shorting ADA because I'm gaining more ADA and I'm losing VIFI through impermanence risk. But the net value of that is being balanced by the IUSD that's being bought and sold against the liquidity pool tokens on the other side to hedge. Yep. Sorry, to arbitrage. Right? So... This The other thing is as well that this system is N generalizable, right? So right now it's not engine. We can't do it for infinity liquidity pools. We haven't set up the systems yet. We're taking it step by step. But as a user, what would be amazing is if you know that you have a portfolio that's, let's say, 10% one token, 10% another across five separate tokens, and then you want 50% in USD, right? Yep. You can set up these customized liquidity combinations where you could say, I'll take 10% of this, match it with USD, 10% of this, match it with ADA, 10% of this, match it with USD, take these two liquidity pool tokens, put them together and make a layer three liquidity pool, right? Because I've got yep. two LP tokens that are now balanced against each other. And as long as you've got bots that are there arbitrating and checking the values of all these, and there's enough liquidity in there to make them worthwhile, functionally, you should be able to build yourself customized hedging positions dependent on whatever your portfolio's design is. Yep. And you've essentially got a DEX which allows you to, you're not achieving complete complete control like the futures market, but you're able to build yourself hedging equivalents Mechanisms, yep. of like what you can get in the futures markets by doing long and shorts. But instead, you're taking advantage of impermanent risk to do that for you. Wow. Yeah. I mean, Pete, I think futures are massively misunderstood, even in the financial world, let alone the crypto world. Um, we, we, we spoke about yesterday, actually, Ray Dalio is the reason we have the, the, the chicken nugget. The, mm -hmm. I don't know if you know this story. He, I do know the story. Yeah, yeah, basically, yeah, sure. yeah. Ba ba basically, McDonald's um, wanted to launch the chicken nugget. They couldn't launch the chicken nugget because they couldn't fix the price of chickens. They they didn't know, you know, six months down the line what the price of these chickens were going to cost. And the reason they couldn't fix the price of the chickens was because the chicken farmers couldn't fix the price of grain. So Ray Dalio, the genius that he is, came along and said, "Well, we can actually figure out a way to." fix these prices and lock in a set price so we know what your margins are going to be through the futures market. Now, that's the only reason that we have the chicken nugget, whether it maybe came out down the line or, or, or whatever reason, but he played a fundamental role in that. So bringing that back to VY5, it's very interesting that I think DeFi is still in, if, if, if I may say this, uh, infancy uh, and is actually going to become just the possibilities and options for, for, for DeFi, and, and we're talking about one, there's many more in regards to the DEXs and the arbitraging and the kind of uh, hedging that you can do with that, is going to become infinitely more useful and the, and the possibilities are going to become infinitely more. And and, and this is fascinating. I mean, it, it, I, I love talking to projects that are doing something different. How many DEXs are there out there? VY5 <laughs> seems to be taking that to the next level and actually innovating the space, which for me is a huge tick uh, in my book, if, I, if, if I'm you. okay to say that. Um, Thank fascinating. You. And that's, I do want to add, that's one of the big things that we really wanted when designing this deck, particularly being on Cardano, right? Cardano gives us a very different suite of tools, I guess you'd say, to work with. 
And this suite of tools allows you to think about implementations in a different way. And when you think about implementations in a different way, you come up with different solutions to the same problem. And those different solutions lead to different consequences. And we thought rather than trying to mimic what the other DEXs were doing on other blockchains, let's actually embrace those differences and see what consequences these differences lead to. And I'm very glad that we did, because exactly as you said, it's given us a real ability to sort of take these concepts that already exist within a DEX and really innovate on them to try and unlock more financial potential out of tools that already exist. Yep. Yep. And we are super excited to continue expanding on this. Another idea. So this this is another example. Um, working with lenders to be able to use LP tokens as collateralization. So as a lender, if you're holding an LP token as collateral, you actually hold 50% of the price risk of holding the outright token itself. Because let's say you have you want to lend Uniswap, but you have Ethereum Uniswap LP. Well, if you're holding 50% Ethereum, 50% Uniswap, your risk is only 50% Uniswap, right? The other 50% is Ethereum. So lenders are able to adjust risks based on the fact that their collateral has got a lower risk level on it because it's an LP token rather than just a token outright. And then because of our stakeless farming, if you're using an LP token as collateral, you could use the stakeless farm to pay back the interest that's being generated on the actual loan that the collateral is being used for. Interesting. Very interesting indeed. Uh, you, you're kind of compounding things with, with, with having this stakeless LP token um, that then you can use for, like you say, one example that you've just given is paying the interest off on whatever loan it is you've, you, you've taken out or whatever, mm -hmm. whatever, whatever it may be. Um, and, and of course, a DEX is only one of the products offered by VYFI. Can we maybe mm -hmm. break down the others? And, and I just want to say, we, we've gone into actually some of the complex things you can do with this DEX. You can also use it for um, the... I don't want to say normal features, but you can use it just like a DEX as well, right? You don't have absolutely, to, absolutely. it doesn't have to be this complicated if you don't want it to be. Correct. It is quite complex stuff that, and, and people always mm -hmm. need to remember this. And I've, I've always got to say this, there is always risk involved in, De in, in DeFi. So it, it, it's something that um, people need to manage and know their depth. You know, if you're not a very good swimmer, don't go and mm -hmm. swim a mile offshore, you know, it's, it's, it's not a good idea. So, so I try to swim the channel. <laughs> but the good, the good thing is you, 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 you definitely can, um, as an inter an intermediary user of DeFi, just use it as a DEX and it works perfectly in those functions. Mm -hmm. Let's break down Absolutely. some more of the suite. So we've got the DEX. Would you say the bar is next or, or what would you say? Yeah. So next? I already brought up the bar before the bar is the distributive mechanism for our system, right? So you stake VIFI at the bar and you get minted the BARS token, which is called XVIFI. This is essentially like an LP token. You can think of it the exact same way. The BAR is a container that holds VIFI, and we're taking all the fees that are generated on the DEX and taking a portion of those, and we're using them to buy VIFI back from the market and deposit it into the BAR. This is called a serve operation. Now, as this takes place, let's say you have 100 XVIFI, and there's 100 VIFI in the BAR, and they're at a one-to-one -one ratio. Um, 100 VIFI is served to the bar. So now we've got 200 VIFI in the bar, but still only 100 X VIFI minted. Uh, you come back to trade back your 100 X VIFI, you now get 200 VIFI back from the 100 that you put in. Wow. So, so that's, it so becomes a, a very way. popular token. It, 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 the, the, perhaps the longer in time you go on with this X VIFI token, the more it's going to be worth. It's kind of almost not a timeshare, exactly but it. similar. That's exactly it. And it's respect, and it's with respect to BiFi. And something that I do want to add here is that it's not a riskless token. We haven't made an up coin, right? So just be aware of that. Yeah. It's always based in the value of VIFI, right? Because X VIFI represents an amount of VIFI in the bar. So if the price of VIFI goes down, the price of X VIFI equivalently also goes down. It's not a risk, it's not an up coin, right? But its value with respect to VIFI is always going up because with every serve, that ratio is getting larger and larger. There's more Wi-Fi in the bar with respect to the amount of X Wi-Fi that's minted. Interesting. Yeah. So, so just to sort of uh, uh, break that down a little bit more, it, it's not an up token. You know, 100 Wi-Fi is not always going to be worth whatever price it is now. You know, let's say you do end up with that 200 Wi-Fi when you originally put in the 100. If Wi-Fi is half the price, you still only have 
uh, uh, the initial sum that you put in. So it, it's always, and I, I love that you're echoing that because DeFi is not riskless and this is still all, um, we're still in, again, an infancy stage of it, but what you guys are doing is, is nothing short of innovative. And I love the suite of products that we're we're, we're, we're getting into. So is, is that the bar in, 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 in a kind of nutshell? I'm sure that's there's the a lot. Bar, yeah. That's the bar in a nutshell. So everything we do in our ecosystem, right, is going to be feeding back to our bar. As our ecosystem grows, the bar is going to be receiving more and more, which means more and more incomes from different sources are being used to buy Wi-Fi back for the market, supporting the liquidity providers who are going to be giving that liquidity to our decks for, for, to allow users to then trade. Um, so it's all about creating the, the correct incentive streams, right? You hold X Wi-Fi or you put Wi-Fi in the bar, you know that trades on our decks pay Wi-Fi to the bar. So that means you're now incentivized to trade on our decks because if you trade on our decks, you're going to be getting some of those fees back through the bar than if you yep. trade on another decks, right? As an example. Um, we've got our vaults. Now, our vaults are essentially staking products that other projects are able to use. And we've been, we were the first real staking product on Cardano. We had NFT staking on Cardano a little yep. over, oh my God, two years ago. I've been doing this for too long. Oh, wow. Yep. You can, you can <laughs> see why I'm tired. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So we uh, we basically took that and we've generalized it to allow other projects on our site to be able to access that. So that's one of the ways that we create sort of a community hub on DeFi on Cardano. We do it by allowing multiple projects to access the tools that are available on our system. And we aggregate the communities that are using those tools for those projects. That way, driving demand for the fundamental products, you know, the decks, the bar, the other drivers of our um, ecosystem. Um, from there, we've got, we'll go into the things that are there. We've got our governance. Our governance is actually being worked on right now. We're working with a team called Summon and Summon are, okay. are sort of the governance gurus on Cardano. Yep. And the okay. reason for that is because we want to upgrade, we want to upgrade our governance. Our governance is currently V1 and it's, it's still not a great system. It's like the system we built was really good a year and a half ago. We're yep. upgrading it so that it's, compatible with Agora and the most current governance standards on Cardano. So that's going to be sort of two months away until it's sort of fully implemented again. And, and then the, we'll be behaving. What, what, what's the goal with governance? Are you guys planning on becoming a DAO sort of thing or, 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 or what's yeah. the kind of vision? with? Because I think governance is another one of those areas in crypto that is just completely misunderstood and underrepresented. Yeah. It's such an important part. So maybe just give us a, a little bit of a view on on. You know, you you spoke about where it's at in terms of development, but what's the vision for you with with, with VYFI governance? Let me tell you the vision for me personally, because I think this will give you a good idea. Um, every time I make a decision for anything to do anything on our site anywhere, I've got seventeen people screaming at me for fifteen different reasons. What yep. I really, really, really want to be able to do is not have to say I'm responsible for this choice. <laughs> Yep. So uh, Larry Fink said a similar thing recently in regards to BlackRock. He said he he didn't want to be. He goes, I, I I love the idea of governance because it means we we can just take a step back and be the you know the 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 kind of uh, correlator of it all. Yeah, exactly. Right. We just we we're the ones that just execute what the people say. And what you know, there's so many open questions on our platform. You know, some people want to implement burning. Some people don't want to implement burning. Some people want to adjust emissions. Some people want to don't want to adjust emissions. Some people want us to focus on if we want to focus on something on the front end or some kind of development that we might want funding for. That's what the treasury is for. You know, so many people want to do so many things, and I honestly and the team, to a certain degree, we can't answer these questions because if we make any decision, then the community is, it's very, one, it's very risky. And two, we want to make sure that it's a more majority approved, you know, like it's yep. really as simple as that. Um, so there's so many things that we want to get done once the governance is up and running. First and foremost, we want to start working. Uh, we want to start building working groups where we essentially get volunteers from the community who are, you know, well-versed in their respective fields, whatever that is. You don't have to be a mathematician, for example, but you know, you're somebody who has some knowledge. Um, and is willing to do a little bit of research to answer some questions for us, like what might be the best options for burning, right? How do we expect the different options for burning to impact our system? Um, and then create a little, you know, five to 10 page report that they can release to the community. And then we can have the discussion to work out how do you think we might want to implement burning? And then the community can vote on whether that's going to be an option or not. That's the process that we want to follow. 
right? And from the Treasury, you want to be rewarding those in the wor working group once the thing has passed proposal and has gotten through to the vote stage upon completion of the vote. The working group has essentially completed their task and the working group would be rewarded from the treasury. Perfect. What's their reward? That's also something that needs to be voted on, right? So yeah, of course. <laughs> all these things all these things need to be voted on. Um, and we've got a lot of plans for our governance once it's, once it's up and running, you know. Uh, exactly as you said, I find it incredibly important for particularly a decentralized um, system. Yeah, and, and, then, and then it kind of, you know, takes its own life form almost, you know, it, it funds itself, it governs itself um, through obviously the, the, the partakers in, in, in of the platform. Um, so we've covered a DEX, we've covered a bar, we've covered the vault, we've covered governance. And I believe the only thing that we've missed is lottery. Yeah, there's the lottery. The lottery is a lottery. There's also one other thing I want to discuss, actually. Yep. Um, the lottery is where you buy a lottery ticket with Wi-Fi um, and you you Right, you're in the lottery to win. <laughs> you know, it's gambling. Really? Uh, I was actually, I'm really proud of the lottery though. We were the first on chain lottery on Cardano. Um, that was my own design. I was the first person to work out how to, not, not the, that's the wrong thing to say. I was not the first person to work it out. I was the first person to be stuffed doing it, I think yeah. is the correct answer. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, if people don't realize this about crypto as well. Actually, and I, I, I probably shouldn't bring this up. It's like, you know, I, I first heard about Bitcoin through Silk Road. Um, and people often go, oh, we can't talk about that because it was, uh, and th there's lots of different views on it. Um, but actually, uh, uh, Bitcoin crypto had a lot of its roots or uh, early use cases in, uh, gambling, believe it or not. <laughs> so not that we're endorsing that at all. And always, you know, if DeFi is risky, there's a lot more risks in, in, in gambling. I think sometimes com people confuse it too, but yeah. So, so, so the lottery, you were the first uh, to, to bring us back in. Uh, yeah. First on Cardano to implement it. So that was good fun. And 10% of all the lottery uh, goes to the bar, right? Perfect. So we're using that as another way to essentially boost the value of XFiFi um, and maintain rewards. Cause you know, you need to buy Wi-Fi to engage with the lottery. Of course. So yeah. that means people are putting current uh, ardor into the liquidity pool taking out Wi-Fi, putting that into the lottery, and then 10% of that's going through to our bar, again, supporting our um, liquidity providers. So the last one that I want to bring up is the auto harvester. So that's our next um, our next product that we're building. Um, now, an auto harvester is a liquidity aggregator, is what they refer to in other chains. We've decided to give it a bit of its own name on Cardano. So the equivalent of this would be like Yearn, um, Harvest.Finance. Yep. Um, Something like one is yeah, one inch. There's no, no, no. One inch is a is a, dex, a aggregator. Uh, dex aggregator, not a liquidity aggregator. Okay. So what we do, what a liquidity aggregator does, is that it collects liquidity. So you'd put in Cardano, and it essentially just farms that for you across multiple protocols. So you can think of it as being an indexed fund for liquidity pools. Now, on Cardano, this works as an advantage in multiple manners. First of all, for new users that just want to be able to access a bit of DeFi risk in multiple places, they can just go, oh, okay, I'm just going to pot, put, you know, a thousand Cardano here and now I'm farming seven different pools, right? But where it becomes really useful for advanced users is the capacity to access strategies that they can just attribute portions of their portfolio to. So, for example, for a Cardano strategy, we would do a DEX, a DEX um, auto harvester. And that would be 25% Wi-Fi, 25% MinSwap, 25% Wing Riders, and 25% um, Milk from Newsly Swap. Okay, okay so, so just just because I know we're getting into the more advanced stuff. So is that you basically, let's say whatever funds you're playing with, they get split between these platforms, mm -hmm. but they're doing it all through your interface on VWiFi. So they're doing it all through, through the VWiFi website. Interesting. Correct. So you would just need to plug in one token, your Cardano, for example. And then you would automatically buy into all four of those liquidity pool tokens and you'll be farming all four of those liquidity pool tokens. On each individual DEX or is that all through? Yes, on, okay. no, on each Perfect. individual DEX. Yeah. Yeah. That's the cool. most important part, right? Because then the way that this system then brings it all together is that we're using this farm from all of these different DEXs from the liquidity that we aggregate and 10% of that farm is being used to buy back Wi-Fi from the market and distribute it to the bar. That way we're able to aggregate liquidity and that liquidity that we aggregate is able to drive value back to the liquidity providers on our decks. 
Interesting. Yeah. So, it, it, and it, will it, I take it, it's not just going to be DEX liquidity or is it just going to be DEXs that you're going to focus on? Is there going to be some sort of a lending aggregator? What, 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 what's, so, what's going on there? Yeah. So there's multiple phases to our auto harvester and you can read a bit more about them on our medium. We've got an article up discussing the four phases. Essentially, we need to do this in a constructive manner, right? We're dealing with new tools, new technologies. Of course. A lot of new students. We've been in crypto for a long time and Cardano is newer than the other blockchains in terms of these implementations, yep, right? absolutely. So our first phase is going to be an auto harvester that focuses on our decks and harvests and farms using our decks and supplying that to the bar because that's going to be the simplest and most straightforward one to implement before we then generalize that to phase two, which is all the DEXs on Cardano, right? And then once we've completed all the DEXs on Cardano, which means we're doing multiple platform harvesting, then we implement phase three, which is cross-chain. Now, cross-chain is where this is discussed much more in detail in our article. We essentially want to set up the capacity for users to be able to access Cardano strategies on other blockchains and Cardano users to be able to access other blockchain strategies through Cardano. Easier said than done, isn't it? Uh, and yes. I have to I have to say that because it, it, interoperability is uh, still something that I think is being figured out. Um, yes. I don't know what your approach or maybe it's stage three. So that's something that, that is likely going to have to be figured out, I think. I don't know whether we're you're going to figure out. We're yeah. going to be figuring out a lot of it as we get to the problem, of course. But we've already got a design. We already understand wow. how we're going to be doing this from an overarching level. Um, we're implementing a tool that I'm calling liquidity beacons. And you can essentially think of a liquidity beacon as a um, a container that exists on multiple blockchains. Yep. And essentially all we do is beam liquidity between these containers. Through messaging. Now, the, ex exactly, right? Yep. These containers then perform an action. That action is the strategy. That strategy is performed on whatever blockchain that's performed and the profits are being generated in that box, Right. But the equivalent minted tokens that represent your ownership of that liquidity beacon are held on Cardano. Okay. So whilst the work is being done over there, the ownership structure is held on the Cardano blockchain. Yep. And then it's, it's a matter of just bridging it between the two to then be able to say these tokens now take from this liquidity beacon. Now, that might already sound complex. But if you know some stuff, I'm sure you'll yep. say, wow, that sounds way too simple <laughs> for what you're trying to do. And as you said before, there's a lot of things that we still need to work out. Of course. But the overarching design that we have, we've already gotten a fairly consistent idea of how we're going to do this. And it should be possible given the tools that already exist. Yeah, it's fascinating. It, 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 interoperability, I think, is one of those things that's still being figured out. I think people are, there's, there's, you know, your bridges, your sort of locking and burning mechanisms. Uh, I think a lot of people try and really overcomplicate it and they try and basically teleport the tokens from one chain to another. And it's like, actually, we, in, if you look at the traditional financial world, the messaging system kind of works, right? Um, but we, we, I mean, we recently looked at Chainlink CCIP. I don't know if you've had a chance to check that out. Uh, no, I have not. Very, Tell me. Their interoperability sort of protocol um is basically a cross-chain messaging service um for all blockchains uh so you know like so, so you'll need chain link so you can use right now i think they've implemented it on ethereum um polygon and three other chains on testnet basically you can execute a function on uh one chain um and basically sort of cross communicate with their messaging service which is really interesting uh, and gaining traction and i think there's again they might be i don't think they completely null and void any other way of um facilitating cross chain but they're certainly people that are maybe pioneering the message side of things so i'm very interested in the sort of interoperability space um you've got things like axelar you've got things like what moonbeam are trying to do uh, and of course what you guys are trying to do sounds sounds yeah, very very interesting and on the Cardano side, you know, where there's a lot of um, there's a lot of people that are working on this as well. Chain port, um, there's an entire yep. the largest side chain is Milkometer. God, yep. I can't believe I almost forgot that name. Yeah, um, we interviewed uh, and, Sebastian uh, not that long ago, I think, or we did. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Great yeah, guy. They're, they're fantastic. They're a great team. Um, so you know, between the tools that exist, there's a lot of tooling that already exists that allows for us to begin working on these problems. 
Uh, exactly as you said, this is phase three. We've still got to complete phase one. So when we get to those problems, we'll be dealing with them, but I'm sure that there will be a lot that we have to face as well. Yep. But that leads me to stage four, the one that we have the most to face um, because I was an idiot and decided to make this project way too complex. Yep. Um, Sounds like- <laughs> uh, we want to be implementing an AI auto harvester. So essentially, we want to be creating a true LP indexed fund where users would just deposit their Cardano, for example, and an AI is essentially determining the LP tokens based on the risk levels that they're going to be automatically invested into. And we'll adjust that based on real market conditions. Um, Now, for this, we've, of course, got an AI engineer. Um, But for this, we then want to be able to allow users that next level of management tools, right? Which is users can engage in an automated system that adapts to market conditions, much like you would expect any managed or indexed fund in a traditional wow. market to behave, right? You don't expect, if you went into an indexed fund in the market, you wouldn't expect the index fund to just stand there like a deer in the headlights if the market starts dropping. And it's AI right? that manages this. And it's AI, in, well, in the traditional markets, mostly, yes, it's AI that manages it. Yep. Um, Unless you're in a managed fund, of course, yep. which you often you need to meet certain investor criteria before you're even allowed of to course. engage with managed funds. Yeah. Um, whereas that equivalent doesn't exist on the blockchain yet. Wow. Right. So we want to we really want to create true indexed funds for LP tokens, and of course, phase three is our cross chain. So we want to create true cross chain indexed LP funds. Wow. I mean, it's just, you've spoke about so many um, different things that are just innovative, exciting. Um, I'm really excited to see how all this rolls out and sort of sort of watch, watch the journey that you guys are on. And I think you've done a good job. Thank you. I think you've done a great job so far, in fact. Uh, and you're certainly innovating. Um, a lot of things that we have in DeFi, you're taking to that next level and you're coming up with these kind of uh, genius and really interesting ways of uh, of of providing benefit for not only the entire DeFi space, but 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 the users of it, uh, certainly within the Cardano space. It's going to be interesting as well. You talk about interoperability with other chains. Actually, I think people get a little bit sort of tribalistic uh, about mm-hmm. this sort of stuff, but actually it's, it, it's, it's beneficial for the whole space. You know, the, the right now blockchain is very much a bums on seats kind of thing. Uh, and what I mean by that is people walk past empty restaurants, whereas they'll go in the busy restaurant. Um, and that's why I think a lot of people sort of, are in Ethereum and it's got the sort of builder pool, but when interoperability is quote unquote solved, if, if that ever becomes the case, I think it will, but uh, then it becomes, you know, looking at these blockchains internally and, and, and why you would want to use them. Um, so and wait a sec, just quickly on that yeah. note, on that note, you know, if we have a cross chain, if we have a cross chain LP index and you have a cross chain LP index, that's focusing on metaverse. Yep. And all of a sudden that cross chain LP index realizes, Oh, there seems to be a metaverse project that's doing very well on Avalanche that's being undervalued right now, all of a sudden, something like a cross-chain LP index is going to be able to draw liquidity from Ethereum, draw liquidity from Cardano, draw liquidity from wherever the cross-chaining is taking place and say, this undervalued project now has access to this portion of liquidity to be able to actually assist in their project's construction, right? That's what the stock market essentially was designed for. It's how does a business owner get access to funds? And what having a system that actually looks out for these point of values do, at least in my opinion, is it drives value to where, hopefully, in a more efficient manner, the creators of projects will be able to use that liquidity in such a way that it'll build their ecosystem. Yep. yep. Because we've got a machine that's looking for those ecosystems that are undervalued. Fascinating. Yeah, I think it is, it's beneficial for the entire crypto space. And you're absolutely right there. The stock market initially was came about things like IPOs and, and, and how do people get money and uh, to, to fund their projects and, and sort of take them public into the next level. So lots of things to come. Um, I just want to sort of finish things off on where is VYFI now? So it, it, as a user, what can I currently do? You can use our DEX. You can use our layer two liquidity pools. You can use our bar. You can use our vaults. You can use our lottery. Um, if you've got Check our vaults out. If you hold tokens on Cardano, it's very likely you hold a token or an NFT that you can already stake on our vault. We've got a lot of projects. Wow. We've got 25 plus projects. Uh, if you just click on vaults and you click um, filter by project, you'll see all the projects that we have. Um, so there's a lot of options there for you to engage. 
Uh, and most importantly, come and connect with us on our socials, you know, come and connect with us on Twitter, on Discord, on um, Telegram. Ask us any questions you have about the ecosystem. Uh, we're here to answer anything. And definitely check out our, our Git books. If you click more and then docs, um, our documentation is really extensive, really widespread. All these complex ideas that I was discussing, all the mechanics that underpin them are described in our docs. So definitely, if you want to engage on a more advanced level, take the time to read through those and understand how those are implemented. Yeah, that's brilliant. Uh, and we're going to leave a link to your socials, VYFI. Um, those documents will, will will get put up, and of course, a link to your Discord, which I think is, uh, you know, a lot of activity going on in there. So, Stephen, it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, this has been nothing short. Yes, of thank you so much. Eye opening, uh, and hopefully, we can get you back on again. Um, and, and and maybe we could even do something where we actually look at uh, demonstrating some of these um, features. Yeah, because I'd love to. I think that's very useful. Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to give a little live demonstration. Um, you know, hit me up and we'll organize that and hit up Johnny. We'll get that organized in the next sort of week or two. For sure. Stephen, it's been an absolute pleasure, my friend. Thank you very much for coming on. Ladies and gentlemen, Stephen Thank Ward, so the CEO of VY5. Thank you.